Hey everybody, and welcome back. My name is Sue, and I'm from OML Embroidery. And today, we are going to be doing this adorable country mug rug. This is awesome. It's a whole lot of fun to do. Misha! Hi, Misha! Hi, Misha! It's, it's a whole um, lot of fun to do. And you can consider it a test. Why is it a test? There's lots and lots of raw edge applique. You can see all this is raw edge applique and lots of folded fabric. So you got to see how well you can do this. So yeah, take your time. This is one practice. It's the whole bit. So, um, Let's see. Tuesday tip video from Cindy King. You rock, Cindy King. Lisa, hi, Sue. Nana, hi, Nana. Uh, Cindy King says, I love that flower. Kind of old-fashioned, kind of scrappy, too. I was going to do each petal a different color, but I didn't. So, yes, yes. Ellen, good morning. Isabel, good morning. Arlene is in the house. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Lynn, Lynn. Um... Lynn came over last weekend and I gave her the pink bag and everything and she loved it so and all the fabric so hopefully that'll inspire our Lynn to get back stitching because she should she's very good at it so uh, before we start on this I want to show you what is coming up for you guys first nails they are galaxy nails they're kind of cool uh, you'll be able to see the design on it better. It's just like stars and planets and yay. Hi, Sue from Texas, catching you live. Yay. Hi, Judy. Welcome. Welcome. Um, uh, I want to show you the next thing coming up. Are you guys ready? I gave you guys a sneak peek, but uh, I'll give you a full peek now. Coming up. So... Crocus is the main thing, and it's um, quilting on each side. So there's going to be, I think, like four quilting blocks. So you can mix and match everything, you know, how you want it to. Different quilting designs here. And on this side, I tried two different things. On this side, I used gray thread, which is purple and gray. I had to think about it. Looks great. And this side, I used different colors. So it's ombre. That's why it looks like clear through there. And But I used gold, gold and yellow. Purple and yellow are complementary colors. So, and on this side too, I used variegated thread. There, you can see it a little bit better. And a lighter purple for the crocus and lighter greens. So I had to, you know, figure out which one I like better. But look at these quilting designs, man. So if you find one that you love, you can put it on either side of the crocus. You can do all crocuses because they're beautiful whatever but that is this one i think is probably my favorite so crocus sign of spring um purple and gray um why not it's awesome this is my favorite side i love this one so um when you're doing it try to put two pieces of batting and maybe a little stretchy fabric uh, so you can get some trapunto lo loft there that's designed for it so it it puffs up but isn't that cute now this is the six by ten size fully lined I used my sewing machine to make a fancy thingy in purple um, around everything and I forgot to top stitch but too late now fully lined on the inside so I'm really happy with that. So this will be coming up next week. Working hard, working hard. That is my favorite bag so far, said Misha. Yay, 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 yay. Thank you. I, I hope everyone likes it. I'm really happy with it. And I actually really like the size 
better. Scuba fabric. Yeah, I was thinking that you could really get some, like, loft, they call it, some um, puffy. Because these will look great. This will look great. Any of, any of the designs, this one especially. Isn't that stunning? It looks so great with the purple, but the leaves, oh yeah. So this crocus, I like it with the darker thread. Darker purple and darker, darker purple and darker greens, just so you know. Uh, love the first side you showed. Well, thank you. So that is coming up. I just have to do the instructions and then you guys can make your own. So remember, keep shopping. Every little bit helps if, um, you know, we can get things going and keep it going, then we can make a lot of changes. So this is what I wanted to remind everyone. If I make enough, I'm not trying to be rich here, but if I make enough to, you know, be able to pay the bills, then I will take the commercials off the channel and there won't be any more ads. Right now, I need it. So, yeah. <laughs> As Shannon says, oh, dang, commercials. I know, and remember, YouTube doesn't let us choose them. I used to put the commercials on after the live. I don't really like... I don't really like the commercials during the live, but I have no choice. So, you know... Yeah, no. So let's keep doing this. Keep working together so we can keep doing this now. Are you guys up for this challenge? Because it's, it's not hard, but you got to take your time doing it. So yeah. Now there is a link in the description. You can get this mug rug on omlembroidery.com. And um, I think it was like four ninety nine US, so uh, worth the challenge. Uh, I appreciate you so much. Thank you, Suzanne Wood. I I'm trying my best to stay where I am because I am having so much fun, and I love the classes. I love doing this. It's it's just where I'm at, um, and I'm having a lot of fun. I work hard and uh, coming up with new things. Jill says, I've just bought the design. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Jill. And there are people that can't afford to buy the designs. That's okay. You can still help by liking and sharing and telling your friends about it. That is a huge help. That's priceless. So um, there's lots everyone can do. <coughs> get your friends to buy designs, you know, whatever. And it still stands if we hit 50 and um, I uh, we haven't hit 50 yet, then you guys get free stuff. So there we go. So polka dots, I love how polka dots turned out. I was really happy with that. Um, this is a more of a turquoise, I didn't realize after, but, and this one is envelope. So we're going to finish it. Is this one size only mug rug? Yeah, I usually just make them five by seven. It's a really good size. 50 what? 50 of one design when I say, I think I started off with the three hearts mug rug and then the quilt block. And then um, I think I did the lily bag too. If I sell 50 of them, then I will give you guys some free blocks to go with that design so worth it worth it worth it so there we go all right so yes to me it's the perfect size even for my huge yeti it just fits perfectly on it and it's nice and you know what you could make a whole bunch of these i think this would be gorgeous so i have some very bright colors i have started it so we'll get there now for the leaves and for the flowers you can use um you can use charm squares you need two for the flowers and just little scraps for these bits so i am thinking of putting the polka dots on the leaves 
and doing the flowers maybe something really dramatic like this is really cool so i think it'll look good i think it'll look good um okay so why don't we go over to the machine and we'll get this test started so i'm going to tell you the uh difficult parts they're not really difficult you just have to practice your trimming and um and and um you know make everything neat and tidy and it'll look great i did pretty well on mine i i literally took my time so yes judy quilt and mr quilt are feeling much better i'm glad i'm glad you guys are this COVID thing is never going to go away. Uh, polka dots really make it cute. Yep. Now, these are just scraps that I have cut up, and it's going to be for the outside parts. So, and this one is going to look completely different than this one. So, let's go over to the machine and see what we've got. All right, let's pull the camera back just a little. There we go. So Bob and police, you can't see, but I'm good. Um, I have almost a full bobbin and, and I should be good. So green and turquoise. So this is the background window. So cut away. Um, I used some nice warm and natural and I stitched it down. I'm not going to trim it cause you don't have to, um, I've never done any raw applique. Does it last years? Yep. Yep. It's just the same. It's just a little more. You don't have your get out of jail free card. You don't have satin stitches and the zigzag stitches. So you have to be a little more precise. Um, and then when it stitches the batting down, it gives you the placement line for this window. And this is the background of the flower. Now we are going to go to the folded fabric. So lots of techniques in this one. One layer of batting. Yes, one layer of batting. Um, I played Bob and Chicken the other day and I won. All right, Aaron. All right. You should uh, make yourself the patch. There's a free patch on OML embroidery with a chicken that says you won. So you've earned it. So these are the colors. Isn't that going to look great? Oh, same as the dark bubbles. So folded fabric for a border. You don't start with applique. You know how I'm always saying that folding fabric, the first step is applique. Not for a border because all of the borders are um, folded fabric. So, and there is a couple of tricks to this. So first step is going to give us our placement. Um, and that's easy enough. You can see the second line here. The next step in folded fabric is going to be the fold line. So I'm going to take my fabric. You want to make sure that when you flip it, that you have a seam allowance. You must have a seam allowance or it's going to um, be short. Now this right here is our line you can see where my needle is lined up so you don't need to put it like this you're going to run short but you do need to make sure that that line is covered so i'm going to line it up with the uh, window fabric and it'll be perfect then we're going to stitch it's it's um easy and fun and boy does it give the mug rug a really good design really good look so that is one and when it's done remember to put the pretty side down by the way I didn't say that so this is the third step in folded fabric and it is when you guess what fold the fabric and we're gonna make a little line little crease um, if you want to iron it you'll make a better crease and then we're going to tack it down. That is the last step. And that's all there is to folded fabric. Before we do the top and bottom, we got to trim this. This is the trick. Don't get your fingers in the way. Isn't that cute? So that's how easy it is. I like it. So this, yeah, we got plenty. We're going to do the next side and 
first step placement 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 so we know where everything goes so there we go there we go there we go so easy face down in the opposite direction that you want your fabric to be folded so again i'm going to line it up with the line now i know it's a bit short here but we're only going to here so we should be just dandy let's stitch it down and see these are just scraps so they're kind of weird shapes here and there um it'll be okay and i'm kind of doing it i do know that i put down a different color for the opposite side I'm just doing it a little bit differently because I can, I can. So here we go. We're going to flip it now. And there we go. Doesn't that blue turquoise look great? I love it. There we go. See, we just made it. We're good. So good guess. Tack down, third step, yay. So before we do the top and bottom, you have got to trim these corners off. And we do that because there's a really good chance that your needle is going to get caught and flip this up. So I'm doing it, um, you know, against my rules. It doesn't have to be a neat or tidy cut or anything. You just got to get rid of the extra flat fabric. So we don't want anything getting caught and folded over and it, it just ruins everything. So we don't want to do it. So that's good enough. It is not even very nice, but it's all we need to do. And there we go. So now we're going to do the top and bottom. And these ones are a little bit longer than the sides. So you could see right here that if you had the fabric, it would definitely get caught. So you don't want to do that. Definitely don't want to do that. So that's the placement. I'm going to make sure this is wide enough. It looks like I might be catching it close. And this is not the one to play chicken on because we need to be very precise. So stitch it down. See, it's easy to do. And um, there we go. There we go. Just hold it down. Keep your fingers out of the way. And I think this is looking great. I love the bright colors. And I can decide what I'm going to do for the rest of it for the flower. So look at that green. Isn't that great? I love it. It's so bright, and I'm going to do the blue down here. I have one left for the blue. So try to make these lines, the folded fabric lines, as neat as possible and down as possible because on this one, oh, it's such a good test. On this one, you have to be really careful. The flower and the leaves go over the edges, and it's really easy if you have too much fabric right on it it's way too easy to cut that fabric and you don't want to do that so look i got a little divot there that's okay we're going to be covering it up but yeah you want to be careful so seam allowance make sure of it try to get everything down as flat as possible and i'm gonna keep doing lining it up with the second line and face down towards the middle and here we go and i have some leftover green for another day or another mug rug who knows i'm loving this these are scraps from a very old um not charm squares layer cake and i i use them here and there because i love 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 the colors so seam allowance little it's not bad but a little bit closer than i like so i'm gonna be really careful and i'm gonna hold it keep your fingers out of the way you know i think i'm unthreaded yeah i came unthreaded 
that sometimes happens when you're folding uh, because the thread got caught and I am gonna have to rewind because I want to get the corner in so let's go back up back up and we want to do minus and it'll probably be there is good enough so let's do that again just like that let's do that again so challenge accepted for the folded fabric i think it looks great it's flat pretty much flat enough i think i did a good job so what i'm gonna do because this kind of is getting in the way of you guys just kind of hack a little bit off there so it doesn't uh get caught on anything so now we're gonna do the leaves so let's do the placement and i'm gonna leave the i've got turquoise thread in there now there's color changes for everything uh i on the other one i did the same bright blue thread for the whole thing and i loved how it looked so i'm gonna do a test i'm gonna trim one at the machine and trim the second one at my desk uh properly and we'll see how well i do you know you know there we go so turquoise and green that's gonna look good so this one i'm gonna trim at the machine just just you know a little experiment and I'm gonna do it at my usual pace. It's awkward, I find. I'm not even sure if I'm on camera the whole time, but that's okay. And there, that is here at the machine. And the next one we will do at the desk. So yeah, polka dots, polka dots make it look country. Um, okay, so we're going to do the second one and we're going to go back to the desk and trim it and see what we think. See how puffy that is? Oops. So see how it goes over? When you're trimming it, make sure you don't get your scissors caught in there. What a disaster that would be. So, okay. There we go. Trim, trim. I can see it's not the greatest right there. the test is on okay so let's take this out and let's go back to the desk and we're gonna very carefully trim because we want to pass this test so I can see right now that one is not the greatest so I love these polka dots so take it move it trim it being careful of the, um, see, I almost did it. See how my scissors get caught underneath? Just be really careful. This is why I always lift it up. Lift it up, the top fabric, so you can see what you're doing. It won't be a problem this way. But I did feel it. There we go. Now that is a much better. Now... Isn't that cute? We are gonna go back to the machine and we are gonna put on the raw edge stitches, which are not satin stitches. Not, not satin stitches. I'll zoom you guys in so you can see. So ready, ready. See how that turquoise looks. It's a darker turquoise. So that's just an extra line. I just like how it looked. So here we go with the blanket stitches. Oh yeah, that one's looking good. Missed a little bit there. You don't have to be that picky. Nobody's gonna see it, right? So it's just a personal test, but I just thought I'll do it in raw edge applique because I love the look. So that one's not too bad. I'll show you a trick to fix it up if you're that picky, but 
just like I said, just a, um, a personal test. So we don't even have to worry too much about it. So this is the side that I did um, at the machine. And you can see here, I got some threads. Not the best, not the worst. It'll be okay. And this side, I'm pretty sure I was off a bit. Oh yeah, there's more threads here. Darn. Oh well, I mean, it's not, it's not the worst thing I've ever done, but it, it could have been quite a bit better here. But I can fix it. And again, nobody is going to see it, right? Uh, nobody's going to see. It's not a mistake. Don't consider it a mistake. Uh, nobody's going to see it. We're not going to worry about it. So now we're going to do the stem. And I'm going to take a little scrappity scrap here. And it's just same but different color green. I don't think it's from the same set, but good little scrap busters. There we go. Oh yeah, the turquoise looks great there. So I'm going to Kimberbell green fabric. There we go. Five by seven, yes. Every time you purchase two, you're helping the uh, channel stay up. We're having a lot of fun with the membership and the classes with the membership. And it's working out really nice. Hopefully everyone is learning about blending. That's what the first two classes were about. So join if you want and learn. It's nice and personal too. So look at how cute that stem is. I love it. I love it. There, sorry, Judy Quilt. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Better. Better. So now we're going to do the blanket stitches. And then we're going to get working on the flower. How are we doing for time? Um, I can't see the time. How about I look at my watch? Alright, we've got a few more minutes. If you wanted to change this to different colors of green, I was thinking the neon green would look good, but you can't. I'm just leaving it. See, that doesn't really work trimming it at the trimming it at there at the machine. So now we have lots more to do and I think I'm going to either do um, let's see, stripes or batik. You guys, let me know. Stripes or batik? Stripes or batik? Which do you think would look better? So it's pale blue stripes, and I'd have to strategically place them in the direction. I think that would look good. All right, I'm going to do that. Never mind. I'm going to do stripes. I think it would be nice. Oh, but wait. Batik, 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 batik. Uh, stripes, batik, batik. All righty. Looks like the batik one. It kind of goes with it a little bit better. Um, I think the stripes would be fine, but the batik fabric, uh, you know, kind of brings everything together here. So, yes, thanks for the vote. Batik won. I like the blue in it. And we are going to get these all stitched. So if you don't have to be mindful of um, fabric and everything, polka dots. <laughs> there we go. Both. Hey, now that's a good idea, right? Both. Look how that one is. Ooh, that's going to be good. So, yep, I'm going to I'm going to do it one way for part of them and the other way for the other part. Keeping in mind I got my scissors caught again in the folded fabric. We want to be careful of that. So, 
And yes, you don't have to do every petal the same color um, for sure. Oh, that's awkward doing it that way. My goodness. Pink, 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 pink. Hey, I did a monumental pink. Monumental. So it's kind of um, um, scrappy, I guess is the best word for it. So if you have a whole bunch of like two by two pieces, you can do it. So I am going to do um, a couple of striped ones. So I want, now you can do it any way that you want. You could do them on an angle, but can you see the stripe? Yeah, you can well enough. So I want them to be directional so that it, it the bottom is here, the top is here. So I want the stripes to reflect that. Now it's almost like fussy cutting a bit, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect or even close to perfect. So this side I'm doing cutting at the machine and the other side I'll be doing it properly at my desk. So see how those stripes go? Ah, see that might be kind of nice. And you could keep going with different fabrics. I think it would look great. So this one is a, a trim at the machine. Oh boy. This is making me nervous. I don't know if I'm going to pass this one because I'm doing so much of it at the machine. It's not going to look the same, but there are a few tricks to fix it up. So, like I said, guys, this is a test for you to test your trimming skills. The more the more you trim, the better you trim, the better this is going to look. Although, if you do all of them the same way and it looks kind of messy, that is also a look in and of itself. It makes it look like it was hand-stitched. Oh, did I do that again? I did. Where's my thread? Oh, it's gone. Quilting in the petals. I didn't quilt in the petals because I wanted them to puff out, which they do when you take it off. So look at these ones. Can you see how much they puff out? That's the look I wanted. That's the look I wanted. Kind of, you know, there's some space in there. I wanted it to look, you know, like old fashioned sort of thing. So, okay. There we go. If you want perfect lines, a good trick too is to put fusible stuff on it. Now I'm missing that part because I forgot to rewind, move everything back, but that's okay. I know where everything's going. Now there's no directionality on this part, so we should be okay. Just like putting it down. That's fine. So, cut, cut, cut. So you can do some extra batting under the uh, petals. Absolutely, you could. It's easy to do. Um, you could put batting. There's different ways of doing terpunto, but what I would do is take scrap pieces of batting and put it underneath and trim and then do the trim line again, just because it would show when you do the um, the stitching, the raw edge applique, the blanket stitch. So, look, I think our flower is looking really cute with different, different ones, different designs on it. Look, isn't that cute? So yeah, you can make it trapunto. It's kind of meant to look that way. So, did we come? Yeah, we did. What's with you? Come on, Lumi. Cat and Jack, let's go. I know, it's me that keeps doing it because I'm trimming at the desk and it's too easy to do. So it's not the machine's fault, it's user error. And that is another reason why I do not trim at the machine. Now we're going to do directional again. So you could do it this way, but I want it to stick with this one. So I'm going to do the stripes 
this way. Now again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but if you pull it down, you can line it up a little bit to keep them straight. But if you have um, like plaid, different colored plaids, different style of plaids, I think that would look great too. See, that one worked out. Loving it, loving it. All right, so this one we're gonna quickly go back to the desk so I don't, um, you know, pull off. That is hard to do and re-threading I'm sorry, that takes a little more time to do. So, yeah. This is so much easier. And um, I find the thread running out, like coming out, I, I find that really annoying because I always stitch and then realize there's no thread and then you have to go back and do it that way. Now this also too, I can see really clearly where it needs to be just a little fixed up. So isn't that cute? I'm liking it so far. Back to the machine and let's do the next one. It really stands out. I really like this. This is a lot of fun. I can't wait to see what you guys do with it because it's awesome. It's a lot of fun. The last thing we have to do is the center and then we're done. So we're almost done. All that applique. Whew. For sure. That's okay. It's a good challenge. It's a good test. And it's a beautiful design. So I say uh, go for it. Try it. You never know. Good practice. There we go. So because I'm doing, doing two different uh, fabrics on it, I, I need just one charm square each. If you're doing the whole thing in uh, the same fabric, you need one and a half. So yeah, no big deal. I need a little more light at my desk. I moved it. These really would make cute quilt blocks. Well, you can do that too, for sure. Uh, just don't put the folded fabric on it and then you could sew it together. Although I could take this design and make it different, different shape and make quilt blocks out of it. Would you guys like that? I'm struggling to find what you guys actually really want because nothing seems to catch everyone's attention. So if you have ideas of something that you think people will get, let me know, because I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out. Mug rugs, we love the mug rugs, because of course we do. But yeah, let me know. I need some ideas. I can, of course, do absolutely anything. So... Quilt blocks would be fantastic. It's such a cute design. So I would just do a five by seven or you could just buy this and do it, do it either or. But uh, a little bit bigger, I think would be adorable. So we're on our last one. Let's do the stripes. And again, I'm gonna line it up with the bottom here. I was trying to do it differently. So it's straight and then the stripes should be straight and I just move it a little forward. There we go. So our patchwork kind of flower is awesome. I would actually love to make a quilt out of this. I think it would be really cute. It would really, really look like an old fashioned quilt with all of the pieces you know, almost like crazy quilting. All of the pieces, different colors, different fabrics, just different. I think it would be great. So now, and I'm trimming in place again. We know which ones I did. Uh, yeah. I find this very awkward. And really, honestly, you guys can see I've done it a few times. It is just simply not as nice, the trimming. 
So here we go. Now we're going to do the outside. Now I tried to put in a little get out of jail free. And what that is, is a back stitch around it. Ooh, that matches really well. A back stitch around the outside because I wanted more definition like this. You can see the definition around the outside. That's from that. So I'm going to go back over here. I tried freestanding lace for the first time. All right. It was a disaster. Oh, no. I only used one layer of water soluble stabilizer and it cut out half the design halfway through. Oh. Um, I only use one sheet now if you can't use the plastic type you have to use the uh fabric type and i only use one um tammy says oh i'm changing here the, love the bag design zipper pouches to match would be great super idea tammy super when will the new bag design be available well, as soon as I can get it done. And Judy Quilt, I am glad you are stepping out of your comfort zone and trying new things. That's also really important. So, um, some, some freestanding lace designs are really heavy duty. So, um, you gotta make sure, depending where they're from and depending who did them um, and what style they are because there's a whole bunch of different styles but I only use um, I only use one sheet of it and and you know what it looks almost exactly like the no-show mesh and um, I mark it to make sure I know the difference but yeah see it's coming along guys I am gonna sit and fix some of the outsides, but uh, yeah, challenge yourself guys to see if you can do it. Um, see if you can do it neater, neater than I did. Okay, so this one is really bad right there. That's okay. It still looks great though. So quilt blocks, mental note, quilt blocks with this design. Um, and I think that would be awesome. And then when I make them bigger, I will put some quilting in the, um, uh, petals. Change it up just a little bit. I'm going to stick with the blanket stitching because I love that. When you say film, that makes me think of a topping. Eh, I never use a topping. Never ever. Judy Quilt, go on OML Embroidery and um, you can um, grab, there's a couple of free freestanding lines and it works. And you can try one of those. What's everyone's favorite water soluble stabilizer? I get mine from Super Punch, which is actually a company here in Canada, in Quebec, which is really nice. Really nice. Davina said, I love this as a quilt block. Blanket Stitch is my favorite. I think it would be really nice to do it as a quilt block. Because I think it would be a lot of fun. Uh, it would be really cool if you had a Charm Square, um, Charm Square set. I think it would be great. So hold on. So this right here is my water soluble. Looks exactly the same. Um, what I do if there isn't a dog lick mark on mine is that I test it to make sure, but I also write 
inside the two that it's water soluble. Just put a W and there you go. Yeah. New growth, red, wash away. Any of those are good ones. Need a Pokemon. I know. I know. Am I doing that again? Okay, now this one, I fixed it, but this one on my machine is not right for this part. So you could leave it exactly like that, but I think, I think having a uh, center looks great. Now, what, what are we going to do for the center? Pink? How about orange polka dot? Let's do that. Yeah. Just to make it stand out. So the version that you guys will be stitching will have the proper color stops. This one just doesn't the, I don't know, the way it sent it, it um, saw it all as one and E4 set it up as, it's kind of weird. E4 set it up as one piece. It's applique, which is great. Thank you. But you know, we need, the color stops on it. I was like, what the heck? But yeah, so I usually do a break apart and then change the colors because I don't know who does applique with all the same colors for each step, but my E4 just wants to do it that way. I should try it and hatch and see. Look how cute that orange is. Now, I did a messy job at cutting, but guess what? Guess what, people? We know what's going to happen, right? Hee hee hee. Ah, see? Every time. Every time when I cut at the machine, this happens. So, no more. No more. I'm done, but no more. I'm not going to do it anymore. Test confirmed. Don't cut at your machine. That's it. So yes, Judy Quilt, it is a very important point that you use the fabric style water soluble stabilizer. It makes all the difference. Um, the other one is just not good enough. You could put, um, you know, like five layers of the plasticky kind, still not gonna stay. It just isn't, it just won't. So we're almost done. Stick with me. Stick with me. What time is it? I'm looking again. Yeah, we're okay. Almost done. We'll finish up quickly. Oh yeah, see, I love the dark turquoise. And of course the orange is just going to make everything stand out. I could have done a little better of a fussy cut there. So I see that I forgot to rewind right here. Can you see that? So I'm gonna do that now. Now I'm not gonna do the whole thing over again, but I'm gonna go back a color and I'm just gonna start it and then select a trim. So I just want it to not do that, but it's gonna look good. I went too far. See, it does all three of them. Well, eh, that's okay. Gives it a different look. So then I'm going to trim and all will be good. See how it did the three in a row? Like, really? So now it's fixed. It's not perfect, but it sure looks good. So the next step, it just looks like a uh, square. The first, the first square that we did. So I have this fabric. It is folded in half and it really helps if you have a nice crease. Now my machine hates this no matter what I do. You want to have the fold pointed towards the center and overlapping. So this is an envelope background. I wish I could have matched this up perfectly I would have been really happy doing that like match the pattern so I'm gonna fiddle about with this now be really careful 
and I stopped it because I'm going to get my all, A-W-L, all, and I'm going to try to hold it down. And if it doesn't work, I got another trick up my sleeve. I did it. Ha! All right. Just be careful. Don't put your fingers in the way. It will sew through. The other trick is I uh, try it and if it doesn't work, then I make it go slow and kind of poke the fabric in and I can usually get it to work. Tape doesn't work if you're wondering. Uh, Captain Jack says, no, I really don't want to do this. So happy music. We are done. Let's pop this out of the hoop and go back to the desk. And we're going to have the final cutout and we're going to see. So make sure you leave a seam allowance. This is not applique this part. You don't want to cut right to the line. That won't work. So we need a little bit uh, of strength here. So, you know, this much is fine. You don't want to have all that bulk. Make sure you clip the corners because we want them to look good and we want them to be nice and straight. I love curved corners. I could have done this. So that's what we have. Now we are going to flip it. And the way I do it is look, I put my finger in there and then I can do the corners right away. And it just, to me, it's easier. Just be careful when you're doing the corners. You don't want to poke it through. I have done that a few times. So there we go. Look, another one. And then we're going to see the front of it. And I think it's going to look great. So nice and flat, you can iron it to get a better look. <gasps> look at that. And you know what? They match. They're like brother and sister right there. Isn't that cute? So flowers can be all the same color. See, when I took it off too, it's puffy. I like it. All the same color. You can alternate colors or you can use completely different ones. And it's easy to do, but it is a test. So I want to see how you guys do on it. So test yourselves. I got a little bit of a messy bit there. So this is my trick for that. These are Tula Pink snips. And believe it or not, you can very carefully, mind you, trim off all these wispy bits and it'll be perfect. Let's do the leaf because I can see them. See how that works? These are so good for that. So if you don't do it perfectly and you're going for perfection, you can use these snips. They don't have to be Tula Pinks, um, but you know how much I love Tula Pink, right? And look, see, I folded it back a bit. You have to be careful because, yeah, you could cut through everything, but it got the little fuzzies off. I'm like, these things are amazing. See how much I cut off? You probably can't. I'll take a picture of it. So there we go. So... Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Let me be clear about that. Test yourself or don't. I think it's a lot of fun. I will make these into quilt blocks for you guys. And I will get working on the spring bag, the instructions, so you guys can put it together too. So thanks everyone for watching. I hope you guys like this video. Uh, make sure you go ahead and like the video before you leave. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, everyone.